Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> How's everybody? Blessed, highly flavored, and anointed and appointed. Praise God. It's a good night to die. Tell your neighbor, are you dead yet? And then say, don't lie to me. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name and forget not his benefits. You know, God has benefits. It's got a retirement plan. It's got a healing health benefit plan. It's called insurance. Tony, he's got it all, man. It's all he asks is for cooperation. It's all he asks for. Cooperate. Get your eyes off yourself and everything else. Get your eyes off your feeling. Get your eyes off your debts. Get your eyes off your mind. It could be a terrible place sometimes. And get your eyes on him. Things begin to happen. You know, so much distractions in the world and so many things that distract us from trying to prevent us from actually making contact with the, the Lord and his presence. And it's constant. It's every day. I could preach on this every single time we get together. Let's go to Psalm 71. Spirit of the Lord is there's freedom. There's a difference between management and freedom. Amen? So many people manage their demons instead of being free from them. And what a life of, a life of management is torment. Amen. A life of management is survival. And a life of management is disconnect. In Psalm 71... First eight verses, please. It says, is everybody there? Yeah. Oh, praise God. Let's sow it. Remember something. You must sow your way out of everything. You know, people want to come to prayer, but they ain't sowed stinking nothing. Pray for me. Pray for yourself. Because when you start praying, you start sowing. Does everybody get it? You know, we've had people have showed up for services. They called. They said, man, I'm bound by drugs and alcohol, this, that, and whatever. I say, look, before I even pray for you, you need to sow. You need to sow in the spirit. Here's a deliverance prayer. Here's a couple prayers. Sow them, then I'll pray for you. That's why many people want to get prayed for, but they haven't even sowed. And nothing's going to happen. I've laid hands on my people. I thought it was a cold rock. Because they ain't willing to receive. They want it, but they don't want it. Amen. See, there's a price to everything. You don't get nothing for nothing. Amen. Jesus paid the price, but you got to cooperate with the price he paid. Amen. So that means you must repent for your sins. Amen? Amen? You can't get nothing until you repent. Once you're washed by the blood of Christ, in true repentance, not because you got caught. Amen? Amen? That's not repentance. Amen. Oh, darn, I got caught. Forgive me, Lord. I hope I don't get caught again. <laughs> yeah. That's an individual that's disconnected. In this place, we repent because we are truly sorry, not because we got caught, but because we displeased him. Amen. Then he washes you with the blood. When he washes you with the blood, now his spirit has access to you because the spirit don't go nowhere, don't touch no one without the touch of the blood first. Because he doesn't touch things that are unclean. He cleans you with the blood, then he touches you. That's why you repent first. Does everybody get it? Amen. And it's not a one-time effect. Repentance is continuously. Repent for your thoughts, false agreements. You repent for everything. You maintain a life of repentance because we should be maintaining a life of conviction. We should look for conviction. Amen? Amen? Amen. If we're looking for conviction, we have a desire to maintain connection. 
In Psalm 71 and verse 1, what does it say? And you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape from myself. Amen. Does everybody hear me? Tonight's teaching is called freedom from self. Deliver me in your righteousness and cause me to escape from myself. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong refuge to which I may resort continually. You have given the commandment to save me from myself. For you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, oh my God, out of the hand of the wicked. The hand of the wicked is called self. Out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. That's your old man called self. For you are my hope, O oh Lord God. You are my trust for my youth. By you I have been upheld from birth. And you are he who took me out of my mother's womb. My praise shall be continually to you. What was he doing? Making connection. See, you don't recognize self unless you're connected. I have become a wonder to many. Why? Because he got connected. But you are my strong refuge. Let my mouth be filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. Why? Because you've got constant praise going on. You've got constant sowing. You are making connection. I don't care where I am. If, you know, you can go to a store and you start hearing the goofy music. And I say, you know, you start, brings you, start, brings you back. Well, the only way to disconnect that and stay connected is to say something. Hallelujah! Amen. The person next to you might pass out, but it doesn't matter. You got connected. I stood in the grocery line, cash registers to the line, and man, something's going on. I'll just go, hallelujah. People pass out all over. I don't care. I'm connected. Oh, hallelujah. Freedom to escape from self. Self. Psalm 51. That's why we've come into a selfie generation. It's all about me. It's a trinity of the devil, me, myself, and I. Oh, yes. <laughs> Psalm 51 and verse 5 and 6. Freedom from self. Is everybody there? Behold, I was brought forth in what? Iniquity. And in sin my mother conceived me. So you and I were born in sin. In sin, because sin means the presence of evil. That's why when you were a little child, you were called your little devil. Amen? Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hi hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. You and I were born in iniquity. We were born in sin. We were conceived in the presence of evil. God says, my desire for you is that you become born again, and your inward being become changed. The desire for truth, not deception. In the inward parts of our being, he wants us to have a desire for truth, not deception. In Ezekiel 36. Freedom from self. So we got to talk about what is self. Self is who you were born with. It's who you are when you came into this realm. Disconnected. Evil. 
eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You knew what good was and you knew what evil was, but you started out basically evil. You looked real cute when you looked real cute as a baby. Babies are beautiful, aren't they? Kids are beautiful. Do you ever hear of the terrible twos? Amen. Then there's the terrible threes, then the fours, then the fives. And it just keeps going until they're born again. Then it's one, <laughs> two. <laughs> as long as they get filled with the Spirit, you know. Ezekiel 36, 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's start at 24. He says, I will take you from all among the nations and gather you out of all the countries and bring you to your own land. And I'll sprinkle clean water around you and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and from all of your idols. How many all know self is an idol? Amen. Amen. I will give you a new heart. I will put a new spirit in you. That's the new man. And I'll take the heart out of heart of stone out of your flesh that's the old man so he now designates the old man called flesh amen? amen and I will give you a new heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you and his spirit will cause you to walk in his judgments and you will keep my judgments and do them because now you'll have the power of the Holy Spirit Everybody get it? We get a new spirit. We get a new heart. He takes a heart out of ourself, the old man. He puts another heart in us. And Holy Spirit empowers us to direct us and lead us. But the old spirit, the old man, is still there. He is called the flesh now. Does everybody get it? He is called the flesh. The old man is associated with the operation in this realm. You can't cast out the old man. And you can't kill the old man. You must crucify him. If you try to kill the old man, you die. Now the old man is used to maintain in this realm. That's all it's good for. That's it. It has no other use. None. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Oh, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verse 17. So what good is the old man? Nothing. It's just the shell of the body that the new man is living in. Amen. 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 Verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? A new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now he begins to explain this. A new creation, it's a divine, a new divine self. Not the self of the old. It's of new. It's not flesh. It's of the spirit. Does everybody get it? New creation. You know, people try to rescue themselves and save themselves. You can't. Amen. The only one that can save us is Christ. He's the only one that can heal us. He's the only one that can do anything. You and I can't do stinking nothing. The only thing we're responsible for doing is cooperating so he can move. In John chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. Freedom from self. It should be everybody's desire. Most people don't even know it because they're not connected. That self is still running their life. Chapter 1 in the Gospel of John verses 10 through 13. 
And he, Jesus, was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. And he came to his own people, <laughs> and his own did not receive him. They didn't even recognize him. They didn't know, even though they knew the scriptures. Amen? Remember, Jesus said to them, you search the scriptures thinking you have salvation, but you won't come to me to get it. That's called relationship. Believe me, there are people that know the Bible inside and out, can even memorize the page numbers. And they're going to wake up in hell because there's no relationship, no connection. Remember, who you're connected with is where you go. Verse 12, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in his name. Are you ready for this? Who were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, which is self, nor of the will of man, but of God. So, you and I were born not of the blood, which is the physical realm, not of the will of the flesh, the self man, or the will of man by manipulation. What do I mean by manipulation? Chemical manipulation, DNA manipulation. Pregnancies from seeds and sperms and so forth, eggs and whatever, manipulation. You and I are not born of that. But we are born of the Spirit, the Spirit of God. That means that you and I have another brand new Spirit. But the old man is still there. But he's called flesh. And he loves the flesh out. Amen. Romans 8. So when you see flesh in here, majority of the time, unless you're not, I mean, there's certain places where flesh just means physical, but then there's certain places in the Word of God where flesh means old man. But you got to be led by the Spirit to be able to interpret what God is saying. In verse 1, it says, There is there now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Condemnation. Who do not walk according to the flesh. Hello. So he's saying here, look at You're proclaiming to be a Christian, but if you're walking according to the old man, you're going to have condemnation. You're going to be condemned. But those who walk according to the Spirit, you'll have life. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own son in likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, well, sin is the presence of evil, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement, that means there's a requirement of cooperation. Of the law might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh or according to the old way, the old man, but who walk according to the new man in the spirit. That's freedom. For those living according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. So they're heavenly bound, not physically bound. And to be carnally minded, which is fleshly minded, is death. But to be what? Spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal, the flesh mind, hates, it's called enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So your old man can never get saved. Does everybody get this? Your old man is never, salvation is not for the old man. <laughs> salvation is for your soul. Hello? Grab hold of this. 
So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Why? Because you got a new man. <laughs> oh, glory. Self equals flesh. Flesh is old man. Old man is old nature. Old nature is old conduct. Has everybody got it? That means self lives a life disconnected from the presence of God. So self means it lives a life connected to evil because it is the offspring of evil. Your old man is an offspring of evil. He was born of darkness. He was in the image of the devil, not the image of God. Your new man is in the image of God. Your old man wasn't. That's why you must be born again. Oh, is everybody cool? Okay. Now, the new creation, a new man is connected to the presence of God. Now, grab hold of this. Are you ready? Both the old man and the new man use the soul. Now, what is the soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, your desires, your appetites, all of those. The old man will use it, and the new man will use it. They both have access to the soul. If the new man gets disconnected from the presence of God, the old man that is connected to evil presence will take control of the soul. Does everybody get this? That's why the soul must be converted. 1 John chapter 3. Freedom from self. We got to definitely, but first you better take care of self. First John chapter 3, verse 7. Freedom from self. First John chapter 3 and verse 7. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, sin from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God. Now I want you to understand this is works of the devil, not fruits of the devil. There's a difference. The spirit bears fruit. The devil bears works. The old man bears works. The new man bears fruit. For this purpose, Jesus was manifested in the physical realm. To do what? To destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. Why? For his seed remains in him and he can't sin because he's been born of God. So he doesn't associate with sin and he doesn't let sin reign in his members. And this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Does everybody get this? Very powerful. So sin is the presence of evil, promoting self, which is the offspring of the devil. The new man is the offspring of Christ. Again, both are connected to the soul. They both have access to the soul. So the soul must be renewed with the new man. The soul must be renewed with the new man, according to the new man. Or the old man will begin to take over again. That's why the battle's inside. It's an inward battle. That's why it's an emotional battle. Amen? In Ephesians chapter 4.
So the old man, the, the devil influences on the outside to try to get the old man to react. The new man does not react. He responds. Only the old man reacts. And when the old man reacts, it's called sowing in the flesh. And that causes the enemy to, it gives the enemy allowance to have access to you. That's why we reap corruption. Amen? Amen. Ephesians chapter 4. And it doesn't mean you reap corruption that day. Sometimes the devil waits until you get a family and everything's going great. You have a big business and then he has the legal right to access. It's like bass fishing. You have the shiner, especially large, largemouth bass. You let that sucker go out there, that thing's... Big mouth comes. It doesn't close right away. It takes it for a while. See... If you pull, you can pull it right out. You have to wait till it begins to hook. So see, the enemy lets you run, 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 build, 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 and one day, wham! And everything goes. And then shame goes. Everything unfolds and crumbles. Look at he's not stupid. I mean, he's stupid, but he's not that stupid. Ephesians 4. Glory. Is everybody okay? Amen. Well, nobody's run out yet, so we're good. <laughs> Christian, lock the door. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 20. It says something powerful here. It says, you have not so learned Christ. Where do you learn? In your soul. He says you've not learned Christ. Why? Because you're not allowing your soul to be completely converted to align with the new man. If you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the Former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Lust is another word for excessive desire. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's your soul. When you see mind, it means your mind, your thoughts, your will, your emotions. That is your soul. Be renewed in your soul. Why? Because if your soul is converted and renewed, it will align with the new man. Is everybody with me? When, but this cannot happen until there's a conversion of the soul. That's why Jesus said something, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And this recalls communion. What is communion? He says he's eating the flesh and drinking the blood, or what we call eating the word of God and drinking the spirit of God. That's why we sow. So when we speak the word, we are sowing. We are eating the word. What you eat is what you become. Why? Because what you speak is what you become. So you worship your sowing because now you're drinking. Now you're fulfilling. And you're beginning to make contact. Is everybody okay? But you've not so learned. Where do you learn? You learn in the soul. Amen? That you put off the old man and, and, it's, and, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the what? New. New man. But here it is. The soul must be converted, must learn. Or else the individual does not know how to allow communication with the new man or connect with the new man. He only lives by the old man. The old man that lusts. Lust is an overwhelming desire. That's what addiction is. Overwhelming desire. That's where people drink, smoke, do drugs, pornography, and all the other goofy things. It's all out of the old man. <clears throat> then it opens the door for the presence of demonic forces in their life. Amen? Okay, the old man is of self. It is corrupt. It lives for self. It indulges in the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life under the rule of Satan. 
and the prince of power of error. But Jesus gave us power and dominion through the feeding of his word and the drinking of his spirit so that the new man can be free from selfish desires and influences. Does everybody understand this? Please grab hold of this. This is not a night of condemnation. It's a night of reality. Romans 12. Where do you learn? In the soul. Romans 12 and verse 1 and 2. Freedom from self. Hallelujah. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. That means clean. Acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or re reasonable service. What does he say? Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your soul. By the renewing of your what? Your soul, which was called your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Renewing of your soul with a new spirit to be free from self. Mark 8. Mark chapter 8. You know, there are people that read their Bible all the time and they don't change. They read it all the time and they don't change. You know why? Because they don't speak it. It is the ministry of the Spirit. It is not the ministry of the letter. Amen. It is the ministry of the Spirit. The word Spirit means breath. Oh, I read my Bible every day. Bummer. You need to start speaking it. Because what you speak is what you eat. And, and don't get me wrong. You know, if there's a place you can't speak it, you know, then read it. But there's got to be some time that you got to speak it. That's why we, God gave us a shortcut. It's called penetrating prayer books. It's like people that go to church on Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving. They get an emotional, I did it. Yes. I made it. And five minutes later, after they leave church, they're cussing, drinking, smoking, partying, doing the same old stupid thing. Because they didn't change. It was an emotional, temporary self-fulfillment that they did something good. But there was no fruit of righteousness. <laughs> Mark 8, 34. Is everybody there? When Jesus had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said to them, whoever desires to come after me, let him do what? Deny, Deny himself. So who is self? The old man. It's called the flesh now. It's an offspring of darkness. And take up his cross. For what? To fight. Remember a cross? You pull it out of the ground, turns into a sword. And then follow me, he says. Why? Because without a fight, you can't follow. And without denying yourself, you won't enter the fight. Because the old man is lazy, compromising, couch potato. Wants everyone else to do it for them. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will what? Save her for what will it profit if a man, if he gains the whole world and loses his, here we are, soul. So what is salvation to? The soul. Oh, glory. Galatians 5. Verses 
They're so good to us. Galatians chapter 5. Remember, the old man is about works. The new man is about fruits. Verse 19. Now the works of the old man, the works of the flesh, are what? Evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is also drugs, Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reviles, revelry, sorry, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who do what? Practice, 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 who do it, do it, and do it, and such things, anything like it, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And flesh is known as the old man. The old man will never go home. Never. There is no salvation for the old man. And don't worry, you won't miss him. In the process of converting the soul, this is, look it. Works of the flesh can't enter heaven. It's when, <laughs> it is when there is no new man or of, that the new man is get disconnected. When the new man gets disconnected from the presence of God and disaligned from the word of God, the old man rules. That, man, that means that the new man ain't going home either. Hello? Hello? Oh. The new man must be connected, aligned, so that he cooperates with the Holy Spirit, walks with the Holy Spirit, carries the, the divine nature, and crucifies the old man. Amen? Amen? Let's go a little further. Verse 22. Remember, we just talked about the works of the old man. It's the works of the flesh, the old man is called works, right? The new man is called fruits. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Self-control, that means control over self, which is the old man. Against there is such no law. And those who are Christ, those who truly are Christ. Now here, here it is. Those who are truly Christ. Those that are truly his, his offsprings. What happened? Those that are truly Christ have crucified the flesh or the old man with what? Its passion and its desires and its lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. Why? Because I'll pull you, I will allow the old man to take over again. There's going to be many people surprised when Jesus says, you can't enter. Is everybody okay? Third John. Third John. But I'm saved by grace. Yes, you are. Grace is called God's plan. That means you've got to cooperate with grace. Third John. Verse 2. Freedom from self. Let's speak it. 
Beloved, I pray that you may what? Prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now there's the true understanding of this. That the soul must prosper. It's got to get converted. Why? It must be aligned also with the new man. For I rejoice greatly when brethren come and testify of the what? Truth. That is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in what? In truth. Wow. Beloved, you do faithfully whatever you do for the brethren and for strangers who have been born witness of your love before the church. If you send them forward on their journey in a manner worthy of God, you will do well because they went forth for his name's sake, taking nothing from the Gentiles. We therefore ought to receive such that we may become fellow workers of the truth. Wow. In the process of converting the soul, there must be a connection. It must be connected and aligned with the new man through the word of God. This is where, look at, when you begin to connect and align, it gives opportunity for deliverance. Deliverance from demonic presence, emotional attachments, fear, bondage, strongholds, mindsets. It begins to drive out these things in freedom from self is achieved. But you must be connected to the presence of God and aligned with his word. Pre connected to the presence of God and aligned with his word. Now there's something else that occurs here. Because when your soul becomes, is in the process of being converted and it's now lining up with the new man and now, so grab hold of this, the soul is now lining up with the new man because it's the divine nature, amen? And you're connecting with the presence of God and aligning yourself with the word of God, that becomes the anointing. Hello? Oh, glory. Romans 7. I'm going to say that again. and its conversion, right? Once the soul starts getting renewed and it begins to align with the new man, which is the offspring of Christ, amen? Because you are now connecting with the presence of God and you're aligning yourself with the word of God. Now it becomes the anointing. Because you are already baptized in the Holy Spirit which is considered the anointing. But now you're maintaining the anointing by staying connected. And what does the anointing do? It separates the old man from the new man. What does the anointing do? Separate the old man from the new man. And what is the anointing? The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. It is the true full character of God Almighty. He is called the Holy Spirit. So he is now and united with your new man and your soul. A threefold cord is hard to break. Now you have the anointing. Now you are strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not your own. Romans 7. You may have to go over this with the teaching. Romans 7, verse 18. What did Jesus say? He who abides in me bears much fruit. That means connected. He said, because without me, you can't bear fruit. The only thing you'll bear is works. Works is of the old man. Fruits is of the new man. Romans 7, 18. 
For I know that in me, that is my flesh, the old man, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do, but the evil I will not to do, that I practice. <laughs> now, if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. It's just representation of the old man. I find in a law that evil is present with me. The one who wills to do good, the new man wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members. Now, we're, what's associated with your members? Your soul. Warring against the law of my mind, there's, where's the mind? The soul. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from myself? <laughs> From the body of death. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with my soul, my mind, my converted mind, I myself serve the law of God. My new man. But with the flesh, my old man, I serve the law of sin. In other words, it's still there. Do you remember Paul went to the Lord and said, man, look at I got a thorn in my flesh. Can't you deliver me? I plead. He says, I pleaded with the Lord three times to remove this from me. And the Lord said, deal with it. In other words, simple and true. Why? He says, I can't remove that thorn. That thorn is called your flesh. If I remove it, you will die and come home. So take dominion over it. What did he say? My grace is sufficient. What is it? My plan. Oh, glory. Is everybody okay? Cool. In the flesh, nothing good dwells. The soul either served the law of God or the flesh, one or the other. Remember, the old man has access to your soul as well as the new man. But your soul will begin to resist as it, as it gets converted. 1 John chapter 2. That's why people think worse first. And then the new man kicks in and says, hold on, homie. That's why people react instead of respond. They need to choke the old man when react wants to start so he can't do nothing until respond takes over. <laughs> First John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hello. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who abides in the Lord and does the will of God abides for what? Forever. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. How many of y'all know your old man's an Antichrist? Amen. You don't have to wait for someone to show up. He's in the mirror every stinking day. It says, they went out from us, but they are not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might become manifested that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. That's why the anointing breaks the yoke. Oh, hallelujah. 
I have not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. So abiding means you must stay connected. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to disconnect you or deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. You will stay connected. The anointing encourages me and you to stay connected. That's what the Holy Spirit does. Come on, get connected. Come on, you know better than that. Who told you that? He's always trying to correct us in that area. You know, don't touch that. Don't agree with that. And the old man's, yeah, yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> do it. Come on, you, can, you remember how good that felt? Do it. There's that fight. Then you have to choke it. No. I'm not going to take that. I'm not going to touch that. Because he who's in me is greater than he who's the world. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a new creation. Old things pass away and all things become new. I'm blessed at every spiritual blessing seated in heavenly places, a joint heir of Christ and the righteousness of God. So get behind me, old man. That's why he's supposed to be behind you. Isn't that what Jesus said to Peter? Get behind me, Satan. He wasn't kidding. Glory. Colossians 3. <laughs>now you got to remember you got to sleep with yourself. <laughs> so as soon as you get up in the morning, he's usually the first one awake. <laughs> Yo, feed me. <laughs> Yo, you know what you got to do today? Come on, let's get distracted so you don't make connection. Oh, you mean I got to do this again? Yeah, no, come on. You don't have to do anything. Just rebel. Pretend you're sick. <laughs> Pretend you're dumb. He's saying, why don't you just lie? Then you go, Holy Spirit, good morning. And all of a sudden, oh, snap. The old man starts backing up. Uh-oh, they called on the Holy Spirit. He's the anointing. I better get back on the cross before something happens. <laughs> oh, yes. Verse 1. Everybody there? Colossians 3. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is. Hello, making connection. Sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind, your soul, on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears in you, also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death, I mean death. Your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these things, anger, wrath, 
malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, grumbling, complaining, stealing, lying, cheating, and etc. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the what? Knowledge. And where is that knowledge? Your soul. According to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Again, the soul must be renewed to cooperate with the new man. The new man must cooperate with the Holy Spirit to be connected and aligned with the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which is the anointing. Amen? And then close at Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Freedom from self. You cannot cast out self. Just like you can't cast out calories. <laughs> or carbs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but you can cast out that sweet desire. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That sweet tooth desire, they say. It's not a fairy tooth. It's a sweet tooth. Oh, hallelujah. Ephesians 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Who is he called? The prince of power of air. And who is he supporting and promoting? The old man. Satan's offspring. Among whom I also, whom also we once conducted ourselves in the what? Loss of the flesh, which is who? The old man. Fulfilling desires of the flesh, which is who? The old man. And of the mind. Now, wait a minute. This is an unconverted soul. And we're by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, which, which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by what? Grace. What's grace? God's plan of escape. By grace you've been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's connected. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Faith is connection. And that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works. Why? Works is of the what? Old man. Fruits is of the what? New man. Lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who were called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise having no hope without God in the world. But now, now in Christ Jesus, you once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself was our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the wall, the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity or hatred that is in that is the law of com commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace. What is the new man? The new man is now the soul, converted soul, and the new spirit of man, and the Holy Spirit. 
and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, and whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple of the Lord, and whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen? Is everybody cool? Did you get it? Praise God. Now put it to work. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. And help us to constantly be connected to your presence. Converted through our soul, aligned with your word. So that the anointing will have his way. Lord, I pray blessing over each and every one. And I'm asking reality, revelation, conviction, and a change of heart will come to each and every one of us. And that you would bring this to remembrance all the days of our life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. <laughs>